Good morning, everyone. It is day number three of the adventure and our first day working at the plant site. We're going to jump in the truck. We're going to bring you guys along. This is episode two. Make sure you hit the like button. Let's roll. We are on site. It is balmy. We're going to unload the forklift, generators, job boxes, and get started working. We'll check back in a little later. We have everything unloaded. We have the job boxes off the generator off. My nephews are dozing the filth out of the way just so we don't pick up a bolt in the first five minutes. Just a stick of plywood. They just move the dust over to the left. It's a quick and efficient way to get the bulk of the stuff out of the way. We're, we're not really worried about the dust. We're just worried about PVC fragments and conduit, glass, stuff like that that'll nuke a tire. As soon as we're done with that, we're going to install all of the quick rails. They just have rails that drop in, and I'm surprised they haven't been stolen yet. And then we are going to hook our cable hoist up to the truss roller. We have humped the electric cable hoist. I think that's 40 or 45 foot. And then we humped the coughing one ton up here. That was uh, quite a challenge. That's why we brought these young guys along. And uh, we're going to suspend the one ton cable hoist from the one ton coughing. And then we will be able to service every floor. And the forklift raises up perfectly to the first floor. So that's kind of nice. We also are installing the drop-in rails because I don't know about you guys, I like a safe work area. So that's what we're going to do. And we will check back in probably on the second story. Doing a quick tour here. These are the indent machines that we are supposed to be removing. These are the ideal self-flow cylinder separator. What this does, is it uses centrifugal force to separate seeds. See all those pockets in there? This drum is spinning at a certain speed and then the rice would get into the pocket, be carried up into the top and dumped into an auger conveyor. And then you get a seed separation. We have 19 of these puppies to take out. So it's gonna be a long, arduous process. We are getting the 220 generator set up with our portable plasma cutter. We'll bring you back for that. We have spouts to drop, electric to unhook, and we just have to get to work. So without further ado, let's get chucking. This is the Tool Shed brand 6,500 watt generator. Bought this at Rural King, pure Chineseium, and it just keeps working. I absolutely love this generator. Very fond of it. I have my 220 extension cord jumping out. We're getting the 110 adapter for the Hypertherm Power Max 30 Air. This is a plasma cutter that makes its own air. Very handy. Perfect for buzzing these angle iron feet off, jacking them up with our special pallet jack, and then we carry them over to the elevator shaft. We have my nephew Ezra using the Hypertherm Power Max 30 air awesome awesome tool for when you have to do a lot of cuts on light duty metal it makes its own air and it just works his brother Judah is removing the downspouting so we can remove these first four I'm going to go ahead and set up a time lapse because who wants to hear that thing talk all day?
with the assistance of the hypertherm, that thing really, really makes quick work of cutting light duty iron. You're not gonna cut 5 8 I-beam with it all day. But for quarter inch thick stuff, it is the way to go. We will now move this over to the hole and get ready to lower it down. Having the first machine down on the ground out by the truck, we have moved on to the second machine. We are using the Warren pulls all. This is the 24 volt version. Very nice piece of kit. And this I-beam is hindering us from just sliding the machine back. So we're gonna yank it this way. And then we will move it over to the hole right over here and rinse and repeat. We'll bring you along. And we're using the uh, pallet jack to make sure it hops up and over where we already cut it off. We removed this downspout right here, and now we can get the pallet jack to reverse over to the hole, and then we will lower it down with the cable hoist. 
I really cannot recommend these Born Pulsols enough. They really, really work well. The electric one that you use with a 120 plug, it does have a little more chooch, but the battery one does come with two batteries and you don't have a cord to fight, so that's really handy. They only have about 13 foot of cable in them. I wish they could double that. It is the end of day number one. Every man certainly earned his salt today, let me tell you. We have five machines on the ground. Whew. It is warm. Uh, I think high noon it was 88 degrees, which isn't really too bad. I'm kind of used to those kinds of temperatures, but the humidity is totally different down here. Take a quick walk through and then we will jump in the truck. We have the secondary chain hoist and the cable hoist as well, still hung. We have some miscellaneous hoppers. Those got taken off of the machine. 
And as you guys saw, we have five machines now on the ground. We have just a few more to tackle on this floor. And then there is six more up top, I think. We got uh, this first one out of this row of machines taken out. So work is progressing slow, but steady. We put a couple of the indent machines in front of the door to discourage thieves. And we stacked the job boxes and put the forklift rack on top of them and took the key out. We are going to jump in the truck. It is day two at the plant. We just finished up at the hotel with the continental breakfast and we're heading over. It is day two. We have to start on the machines behind me. We're gonna go ahead and just roll a time lapse because you guys have already seen everything that we're doing. We're just using the plasma, cut the bottom stand off. We're using our high lift pallet jack, then we wheel them to the hole and hoist them down with the cable hoist. Without further ado, let's get rolling. We just got back from lunch. As you can see, we have made some good progress. Our Harbor Freight cable hoist gave up the ghost. Luke opened up the electrical box and found a loose wire, got it going for one more machine, and then it just wouldn't go anymore. So we assumed the brushes or whatever gave up the ghost in it. It served us well for about four years. And so we just ran 17 miles away to the local Harbor Freight and picked up a new one, $319. Just can't beat them. When they give you problems, throw them away. We always save our old ones for parts, capacitors, up and down buttons, you name it. They don't eat, we just throw them on the shelf. As you saw, Mr. Ezra was just chooching on the old plasma. The pure Chinesium tool shed generator just continues to blow my mind. Bought this thing like six, eight years ago. I don't even know. Like it has to be over a thousand hours on it. Just keeps going. Absolutely amazing. We are down to three machines in this room that are left. We're making tracks. We will then, once we move these last three machines, we will then move on up one story to the third floor. We're on the second floor right now, and we will pull the five or six that are up there. If you enjoyed the video so far, please do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. I better get back to work before these guys mutiny on me.
Ladies and gentlemen, we have finished on the second floor. The Harbor Freight cable hoist of awesomeness continues to impress. We are getting ready to shift floors. I'm gonna do a quick walkthrough. Generator continues to impress. Hypertherm PowerMax 30 Air. We actually did have a little bit of trouble with that, but I changed the swirl ring and that seemed to solve the problem. And not too long ago, there were several, several machines. I think there was 16 on this floor and they are all gone. My nephews, they're learning a lot. We're doing rigging, using the hypertherm, of course. It's just kind of awesome. They're shunting everything over to the hole right now so we can hoist up to the next floor because our forklift won't go any higher than the first floor. These are all these spouts. <laughs> The scrapper, whoever breaks in here next, is gonna love us. We removed all these spouts for them. I'm sure these will end up disappearing eventually. They'll toss them right out the window. Pretty awesome. These are a old, really old color sorter. They look at each individual seed and they sort them by color. Looks like some people have either been stealing parts off of them or they have been stolen to take to the scrap man. Yeah, I would say it's that because they're all stainless. These are uh, channels right here. These are the channels. So this would be like a 10 channel probably. You can count them. They've been stealing the channels off of them to take to the scrap yard because they're solid stainless. We are switching floors, and Mr. Ezra is getting a taste of the old days. <laughs> I spent many hours right where he's at, hoisting and a hoisting. Good for him. We are, uh, like I said, switching floors. We're gonna hoist the pallet jack first, and then we're gonna hoist the uh, generator. It'll be kind of an interesting hoist because the generator is going to hoist itself while it's running and powering the hoist that is hoisting the generator. If you followed that, hit that thumbs up. Mr. Judah just did his first rigging. He switched out the six foot choker for an eight foot choker, of course under my direction. And we are raising up the cable hoist. We have the cable hoist set up in the straight cable configuration, which derates it to a thousand pounds but that's gonna be more than adequate to hoist up the generator and the pallet jack. Of course, the ladders, all the small tools and stuff, we just hump up the stairs, just get to it. Nothing to it but to do it. It is awesome to see the next generation really learning and getting a foothold in the world. Not too many of them coming up the way these boys are coming up. We're lowering the cable down. We're gonna snag the pallet jack.
event here. We have a generator being hoisted up. While it's generating power for the hoist. This is not something you see every day. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. Perfect. Another flawless execution. Luke is going to install our machine barricade. This just helps to deter anybody that is looking for a quick buck. We removed a grand total of 15 machines with the help of the nephews. This is their first plant and they're earning their keep. I will put it like that. It's kind of hot, muggy, but we just keep hydrating and we're just getting the job done. One piece at a time, eat the elephant one bite at a time, and then you go home and move on to the next plant. This is how we secure the job boxes at the end of the day and our fork extensions because we have had them walk off of job sites. So takes quite a bit of effort to lift that rack and pull them off. And then this is our test to see what kind of activity in the area we have. Without further ado, let's get out of here. This is the end of day two. Good morning, everyone. It is day three at the plant. I think we can get it knocked in the head today. We're gonna bring you guys along. Hope you enjoy. We made it to floor three. As you can see, our hoist wasn't stolen. That's nice. Do a quick floor tour. We have a Carter Day sizer machine. This sizes the individual kernels of rice to take out. There are, I think, half a dozen here. There's seven. And we are only interested in the most modern one. We don't want these older ones, so that's kind of nice. These machines are a little ornery to move around because they're made out of all sheet metal and they just kind of stink. We have seven machines total to take out. Should be a good day. My guys are gonna start busting hump. Mr. Ezra, he's gonna start plasma cutting, his most favorite job. And we're gonna get these machines out. What's your thoughts? Gonna be a lot of work. <laughs> it's all right, he's tough. He'll make it happen. Gonna try to fire up the old Jenny with no choke. Awesome. I love this generator. Just continue to impress. Judo is dropping the hopper. We're probably gonna have to cut that out, unfortunately. That'll take a little bit of time. Ezra is prepping his work site. We've already done the house cleaning, like I said, and we have moved one of the screw conveyor chunks so we can get to the rear two.
We have moved on to the Carter Day sizer and I knocked out a couple of lift points. This actually resembles the factory lift points. I just cut them out with a uh, plasma cutter and we are running under these shafts right here because they are actually through shafts. These shafts right here, they just go into the sheet metal so I don't wanna tweak on those. They only stick through about three to four inches. So we wanna lift off of the proper lift points. We're using dual chokers on both ends. Uh, this is kind of an oddball system. They use these roller feeders for rice. And so I had to get a little creative and build that lift point and put that bend in it freehand. So I think it's gonna work out great. We will bring you guys along. We have the 612 removed, of course, the sizer machine. We have all of these removed, as you saw, and we are down to these two after this. So we should, Lord willing, and the creeks don't rise, should be done today. We're gonna have to nuke these hoppers out of the way and then scoot these over to the hole, lower them down, and life is good. So Ezra just got up with the clevises we needed. Let's get rigging. We have the 612 lifted in a triangular pattern, technically. We're around those two jabs over there. Luke is hoisting it out over the hole, and we doubled up with our snatch block just to be safe because I believe this is the heaviest machine that we've hoisted so far. Luke then drags out the beam trolley right out to the middle of the hole. And now we're ready to lower it down. Judah is going to lower the chain hoist to its maximum length. Then we're gonna go down a floor and lower the cable hoist. And then we should hit the concrete floor. Judah is almost at maximum length. I told him back in my day, I used to have to do that all day. There was no electric hoist. That sucker makes it nice. Esmo is having the most fun. Him and the Power Max 30 Air are well acquainted. He's just loving it. Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up. Now that the chain hoist is down, Luke's gonna go ahead and lower the machine all the way down to the ground. We probably could have used the straight cable, but I don't like taking chances on a job site. We waited for the machine to spin the proper direction so we could pick it up with the forklift. Now we're gonna go ahead. There we have it, touchdown. With the 612 sizer being on the ground, I am actually going to round out the video on day three because I have to go to Crowley, Louisiana to look at more equipment. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. I'm gonna jump in the truck, head over to Crowley, and then we will bring you back on day four when we are loading the semi. Luke, Ezra, and Judah are going to lower the last two machines off camera, of course, and then start packing up tools and we are off to the next plant. Gonna do a final walkthrough of the plant. We are packing up. We have just these few little oddball trinkets left. This is the first floor that we worked on. You can hear Luke is ripping and tearing on the forklift below. We're packing, moving and a shaking, getting ready to head to the next plant. This is where the original 15, I believe, indent machines were. 
look outside at all the equipment. Here we have it. There's the truck, of course. I cubed those three right there together just to make sure they would go on the semi. They're at about 90 inches wide. Tons of machinery has been moved out and we still have the grader inside. Walking up the stairs to the third story. These stairs have been the bane of my existence throughout the whole plant. They built one of the most beautiful steel plants I've ever seen and they didn't put in an elevator. That is insane to me. At the very least, a man lift would have been nice. We'll walk out now and see the equipment we removed on this floor. We are up on the third floor. This is the final floor that we took machinery out on. We have the new Harbor Freight hoist. Just walking through. We had one 612 Carter Day grader there. And then I believe we had five indent machines here. Like I said, the crew is just packing up. We still have the hypertherm out. These machines are older, days gone by machines. They're of an older variety that aren't desirable anymore. And we left it just about the same condition that we found it in. Not really too much to the old place. It's just sadly going to decay unfortunately. The gentleman that owns the facility told me that across the street right there is the city limits. So the issue that this plant had was that they had to clean and hold the rice here and then they had to move it across the street which was breaking the kernels. So it just kind of came down to the wrong location. Of course, a lot of industries across America are dying or getting conglomerated. So even though this is just a awesome, beautiful, heavy duty facility, it's just going to decay, unfortunately. We have the job boxes secure. Forklift key is out. Of course, that really won't deter anyone that's actually motivated to steal but is what it is. We also have all of our smalls that you could toss in to a pickup truck inside. Of course, our pallet jacks are still inside. The generator's still inside. The building is not lockable, but we do have the two machines tucked in front of the door. So that will at least make it to where they have to carry stuff out the walk-in doors. We'll check back in outside and this will be the final day of the plant. The truck is standing idly by, got the machines all out, just a final look over of everything. This is the plant. It was an awesome plant, sad to see it decay into nothingness. And it was a lot of fun bringing the nephews along and training them how to be a millwright. We've been doing it for many, many years. I started doing it when I was about 12 years old and I've enjoyed doing it ever since. So I think we're gonna wrap this up. We'll check back in tomorrow with the semi and we'll get loaded and we'll get on to the next plant. Hello everyone, welcome back. It is day four and we are loading a hot shot truck right behind me. The truck air conditioner is not keeping up even though we had it recharged. It is a 101 degrees here, 100% humidity again random thunderstorms through the area. It's warm. The air is thick. Again, it's like breathing maple syrup. We're gonna go ahead, get set up on time-lapse. I'm not sure how much longer the phone will even run. It is getting extremely hot. I have downgraded the video to 1080p, 30 frames per second, and she is chug-a-luggin'. Without further ado, let's start the old time-lapse, get this hot shot on the way, and We'll bring you back after we're done.
are hiding out in the truck. It has been torrential rain for the past two hours. We have the hot shot loaded, as you guys have seen. And the gentleman that works for the owner, he is still using the forklift, so he's gonna button up the building. We're heading to the hotel to get dry. We have arrived at the plant. Lord willing, and the creeks don't rise. This should be our final day. We're gonna get you guys set up on the third story. We're gonna time lapse loading this semi, then we're gonna load our trailer, and we will check back in once that is all done. If you've enjoyed the video so far, please hit the like button, subscribe if you're new. It really helps out the channel and keeps me motivated to keep producing content. It takes a lot of time to bring you guys along on the adventure. We have the semi all loaded. He's tying down, as you saw in the time lapse. We also, unfortunately, had to shunt four pieces of equipment to the next plant. That is a little unfortunate. It's gonna add probably five hours to our day, but that is the breaks of the game when you're doing over the road work. We are tied down, loaded for dog, and we are going to move these four pieces of equipment to Alexandria, Louisiana. And then we will buzz right back here and check into the hotel. Tomorrow morning, we will bounce right back here and load up the job boxes, the generator, and both pallet jacks and the forklift, of course. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the Millwright work series. I'd like to thank everybody that came along on the adventure. Please like, share, and subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you next time.